engines so google is one of the most most used search engine almost 75 percent of the web uses google search engine let's understand how it works first what is a search engine so i mentioned that the world wide web is just a service that is provided on the internet right what if i want to find some information there has to be some mechanism or the software which allows me to do this this is what a search engine does a few examples of search engines that we are already exposed to are google yahoo and bing baidu yandex aol ask.com are search engines but for a different geographical location now let's understand what are the types of search engines so we understand that in a search engine, you see these results. It found me, it aggregated all of the information and then displays it into the most easiest way I can understand. So if I want to understand what is available in this particular page, it tells me, it says the title of the page is all rhymes for you. And who is the order? Rhyme zone. And this is the website that I would be going to and what I will get over there so similarly you will you will be able to understand everything that is available on that particular page that you might be visiting isn't it common sense to understand that if you are able to retrieve or get all of this information this particular platform should have collected these informations right yes so that is how this are collected so crawler based search engines dig through or crawl through every web page take keywords and then you will be able to give it to you more like a dictionary so what this does is it visits your page understands what is the content of that particular page line by line word by word letter by letter and then understands that this is the information that is provided on this particular page and then creates a very 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 descriptive short option short way of displaying that result to you so that you can find the relevant information so this is called a crawler based search engine so google bing are crawler based search engines next we take a look at human powered search engines human powered search engines are where you interact with the human or a human is the one who is going and finding all of this information and uploading it to their platform so just dial is one of the best examples for a human powered directories remember those days where you call into just dial's hotline number tell them what you're looking for and then they would verify your results and then we'll be able to display all the results to you over an SMS, right? But the reason why human powered search in directories are not very famous is because you as a business can pay the platform to buy the position of that particular result. So this is the reason people use crawler based search engine because in crawler based search engines, you get the most relevant result, not the paid or advertised results next there are a few more which we do not know what they are hybrid search engines so this is a mix of both crawler based and human powered directories so here google and google yahoo and bing are actually hybrid search engines where you also have the ability to get the information from crawler based and also displays your results from local directories as well. So let me take another example. Digital marketing courses in Bangalore. I'm going to search for this. This information over here is nothing but the Google My Business page. So these are local directories submitted by each company here. So all of these information are crawled and these information are human powered so you understand this is why google yahoo 
three are the most used search engines in today's world. The meta type of search engines. These search engines don't really find information from the web. They use other search engines. I know it might be a little difficult for you to understand what I said to you right now, but let me show you the example. It will be easy for you to understand. So I go to Trivago.in, right? Notice this is actually a search engine, right? It is a tourism or a travel based search engine. So I want to find hotels in Goa. I want this I enter my check in checkout date, 30 and the 14. I want a single room. I search. Notice I do not get results of Trivago. I receive only results from other search engines. So this is what metas are. So if I want to understand more information about this, I do not go directly to where I'm supposed to go, which means the website of this particular hotel. But I go to where Trivago retrieve the result from. So I receive I come to make my trip.com and here I can find all the information that I require for this particular room. So you see a very 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 easy way to understand what a meta type of search engine is. is. Alright. Next now let's understand. So this process, the crawler based human powered hybrid search engines and meta search engines were how the search engines collected the information. Right? Now let's understand how it works. So we type we type those keywords. So this is I'm at Google. I type the keyword digital marketing courses near me. This, you see this section which says 0 0.86 seconds. So what Google did is it tried to understand what I am looking for, went through its database and saw where are these words mentioned and where are the similar words mentioned. So web marketing, internet marketing and marketing. Digital marketing courses, digital marketing courses, social media marketing, marketing course. So this tells this tells me that Google already had this information with itself. Now all it did was it went ahead and found those information for me, and that is why it took 0 0.86 seconds to display these results to me. Right, understood? So what it does is first Google goes ahead and sends a particular software called crawler. This crawler goes throughout the web and then downloads the information that is your website's information and then it understands what is available there. The next process is it stores these files. These files are called index I N D E X similar to what you see on your textbook, which gives you a summarized information of what is available in the textbook. So Google indexes web pages and then stores it with itself. Then when a human searches on that particular thing, we go, Google goes ahead and finds or fetches the information from the database, checks it with the words that you have used, calculates how good your content is and then it will display the result. So this process from me searching for something and then displaying the result is because it has to process that particular information. So that is why it takes a, that 0 0.86 seconds to display the results. All right, so search engine result page. So Every search engine, be it a human-powered search engine, a, a crawler-based search engine, or a meta search engine, or a hybrid search engine, all of them have a search engine result page. In our case, we're taking a look at google.com. So this is the search engine result page. So this is my search bar. 
where I searched for what I want and here I have received the results right so now let's understand what are the results so the first four sections right are reserved for advertisements so this is where you have to pay the platform where in this case Google you pay the platform to display these results these are nothing but local directory results depending on where or which geographical location I am searching from currently I am searching from Bangalore so Google understands which is the closest place that is available near me and then displays only those results so these are local listings these are related searches for this particular term that I have searched so people often ask for this information so the reason why Google is able to display this result is because Google understands the meaning of what I do what I search for this is called the concept of latent semantic indexing LSI which we will be covering in the later modules so now starts the search engine or optimization pages so in total there are about 17 maximum results that can be displayed in one page of the Google search engine right so the bottom the top four are advertisements the local listings the related searches 10 organic results and then three advertisements at the bottom again this is related searches for these words so which means this is equivalent to the most most searched terms when people search for this this is different to what this is this is people whenever they search for this particular thing the very next search is usually this but this is when people search for this they wanted to understand more and that is why they search for these particular words all right so this is what a search engine result page is similarly let's go to Bing so Bing is a search engine that was provided by Microsoft digital marketing courses I'm going to search for digital marketing courses you see it is similar to what we see over there so we see the advertisements this is called a feature snippet what people also ask for search engine optimized results local listings and then advertisements again and then related searches now let's think of just there for example that's a human power directory and then I you called you interacted with a human and then they sent you the results so this these results were sent to you in an order remember when I say an order you would see this type of format that is available on all the listings so when you're searching for anything on just dial you would have received the name of the company or the service provider their phone number and what was their location of service right so this used to come on an SMS so it, that SMS is the search engine result page for just that simple right yes all right let's move on so here are a few search engines that are predominantly used in the world Google, Bing and Yahoo are the major ones and everybody else uses what these three perform. Now let's come to what websites are and its components. Let me ask you a question. Does website really exist? Or it doesn't? Ha. Let's address that question in a couple of minutes, right? A website is actually a collection of web pages. When I say a collection of web pages, let's see what it is. Let's take this example. So I see an 
a result here which says digital marketing forces dot in. So you would say that this is a website, but me, I would say this is a domain. You see, the results that you receive on search engines are web pages, not websites. So whenever somebody says that they will rank your particular website and give it to you for these keywords, tell them, my man, it is not websites that gets ranked. Those are web pages that get ranked. All right. So you see here, I reached the home page of digitalmarketingcourses.com. I did not come to the website. This is the home page. You can see the highlighted section. So I'll go to the about page. You see the highlight changed. So now coming back to the question, that website, does website really exist? <laughs> That's a tricky question to answer. So a website is a collection of all these web pages that is related to one particular company or also called as a domain. So digitalmarketingcourses.in is a domain and then you get these results right so the website is nothing but a collection of related web pages that can be accessed by visiting the home page using a browser oh what is a web page the web page is the actual result on the search engine this is where each of your individual content of each web page is present all right Good. now let's come to what do we require for hosting a website? You would have heard this, these terms, hosting a website. So it falls into three major components. One is you have to have a domain. Next, you have to buy a hosting. And then it is content. Let me relate this to your physical world. If you want to buy a house that is equivalent to your website, First, you have to buy, purchase the land. Then you have to construct the building. Then you have to do the interior designing. And that is when it becomes your home. Similarly, you cannot have a website if you don't have a domain. So a domain, the examples of a domain are google.com. Is not a website, it is a domain. Bing.com is not a website, it is a domain. Right? So now you understand what is a domain. Next is hosting. So remember when I said that network of computers are connected between each other in the internet, right? And in the web, for you to access content. You have to have another computer which actually has that content, right? So this is what is a hosting. So these are special computers that allow you to host things on the internet. And then when I say host things, host your content. We'll take a look at these in a little more in detail in the following modules, all right? Next, what is a domain? Domain is the key part of your online address. This is how your consumers and prospects are going to find you. If you don't have a domain, your website does not exist. So google.com is a domain that was purchased by Alphabet Company. Facebook.com is the domain that was purchased by Facebook Corporation. Microsoft.com is the domain that was purchased by the company Microsoft Incorporated. So, these are nothing but you are reserving your virtual space on the internet. You say that if anybody searches with this particular name on their browser, they have to come to my domain. All right. So the most important thing about a domain is it is unique. Unique means once you have bought google.com, someone else cannot own or lease google.com at the same time. All right? All right. Next, what is a subdomain? This is a little tricky from what a domain is. So we know that 
a subdomain is we know that a domain is google.com this is a domain have you guys used the google drive yes google drive is a subdomain of google.com so this is what a subdomain is so to understand these three sections over here let's try to identify what drive.google.com is and what google.com is the subdomain is nothing but an additional part of your actual domain you can either create this so that you want you can make your consumers navigate to different sections of your website or it can be completely different all right let's take a look at a few examples i'm trying to go to ads dot first let's start with google.com I reach a website where Google has hosted a search engine product right here the functionality of this particular website is different as compared to what other websites would do right so I search for things here and then I get results inside the domain see I haven't exited the domain but only when I click on these results I would exit the domain so this is a functionality of this particular website right now let's go to try and understand what so I go to drive.google.com and then it asks me to authenticate so this is trying to give me access give access to my particular drive so this has a different functionality where you can go ahead and store save files so this is a subdomain so if you see here google.com had a different functionality and drive.google.com had a completely different functionality right now let's come back and then try to understand the first section so i i searched for business.facebook.com this is a subdomain of facebook that they have created so this creates gives you all of the campaigns where from which you can run advertisements on google all right all right so let's come back so now you understood what this is you have separate installations from your main sites as well or you want to have them navigate to a different section altogether that's up to you how you want to decide on how you want to use this functionality of subdomain all right let's move forward now let's understand what a top level domain is the top level domain is the last segment of your domain name so when i say the last segment of your domain name, your domain name usually is google.com this highlighted section dot com denotes which part of the internet or the web does this domain named google exists so google.com is a domain with under the name of google which is available in the top level domain called dot com google dot in is different google dot au is different google dot uk is different google dot co dot in is different but all of these are still search engines but they provide services to different geographical locations so this is what top level domain is it identifies what this particular website is associated with and who owns it when, when i say who owns it you can identify this by doing a few searches to understand who owns this particular domain so we will be taking a look at all of those functionalities and how we find that as well all right so the reason why it is segmented into this into separate or multiple top level domains is for easier manageability so i can or internet corporation for assigned names and numbers is the one who is responsible for maintaining all of these 
top level domains that is a dot com domain a dot in domain a dot org domain a dot net domain a dot go dot in and so on right so currently there are over 1200 top level domains but not all of them are open to users right let's understand a little bit further what are the types of top level domains so the top level domains identifies or tries to tell you where your particular domain exists whether it exists in within the dot com network or the dot biz network the dot gov network and dot edu and so on so this is nothing but separate segmentation of the dns or the domain naming structure the domain naming system so this tells you what where your domain exists so whenever somebody searches for a particular thing it searches for it searches for that particular domain name in that so if i do dot in it takes a bit and then takes me to dot co dot in are you understand all right so there are two major types of top level domains one is a generic top level domain that is a dot com a dot org dot net dot biz dot gov etc et a country code top level domain is backed by a particular geographical location so let's understand what that is further global or generic top level domains are these country code usually signifies which geographical location your domain belongs to so these are categorized by domain or by geographical locations so now comes a question so now we have a top level domain the previous slide mentioned that it is after the final dot so if you have google.co.in the final dot is this so yes this dot in is what is your top uh, is your top level domain but what is this dot co yes this dot co is the second level domain so now you understand we have a top level domain a second level domain and your domain all right cool now this the reason why we visited that is to understand what a url is so here everything that you put in the address bar translates to a url so when i'm if i'm searching for something it goes to the web or if i'm not let's say i go to facebook so I, let me go to free.facebook.com. So this is free.facebook.com, right? So I go to my facebook.com. How did the browser or my browser know that it has to go to this particular address? How did it find it? How did it go to this particular address? Hmm. Tricky question, isn't it? So this is where your URL helps. So URL is actually the follow the rules that you have to follow before you can make sure a particular file can be accessed over the internet. So it usually has www your domain name dot top level domain or a second level domain. Dot top level domain and then examples right so this is how it is going to look like let's take an example so I'm going to go to Trivago so I am in Trivago dot in so if you see here this is the World Wide Web this is called a protocol so protocol is nothing but a set of rules that you have to follow in for in order for you to host a particular website on the web so this is the domain name this is the dot in or it is called the top level domain so you see this forward slash after the dot in there is a forward slash everything which follows it is called a slug so 
this is what it was. So it tells me that there is a www. There is a protocol called HTTP or HTTPS. It is the hypertext transfer protocol. So this allows you to be able to connect to the internet and then find things that you are looking for. And then www is where it has to search. The domain name, the second level domain, the top level domain and the slug as to which web page you are trying to access. So this is how a URL is structured. This is by default available and you have to follow this as well.